It's now 5 o'clock. I would suggest that those of you who have not taken your place do so immediately. It is now the time and place for the October 14, 2014 meeting of the Moorhead Public Service Commission. Could I ask for a motion, please, concerning our agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. That motion carries. Could I ask for a similar motion, please, concerning the consent agenda? I'll move the consent agenda with the one change to the minutes that I've already told Casey about. Okay. Are you going to share that with us? Am I going to what? I don't want to embarrass okay. anybody. I mean, just because Casey made a mistake, we don't have to share it with the world. I mean. Well, okay, if you want it, I left the meeting at 5 o'clock and somebody had me as voting in favor of a, of a action that took place after 5 o'clock. How is that? Figment of my imagination. I didn't make them. Well, and she's got a very, left, very active imagination. You know that. Yeah. yeah. I wondered how that happened. So, with that minor change, could I have a second to the motion? I uh, second the motion. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. That motion carries. That brings us down to customers to be heard. Are there any customers to be heard? Seeing none. Any recognitions, William? No. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, I think it's been. Uh, practice of this organization to do a special something for uh, longtime serving members of the commission who leave the commission. We did it for Bob Swenson, if I remember right. I think we should do it for Miss Stephens. Well, I agree. I think I'd mentioned that to uh, well, Bill at one point that we should do then something. Then I'm mentioning it to Bill, too. And would you like to do the special recognition here where you present something to? Ms. Stephenson? That's what we did to Bob, wasn't it? Bob actually got well, an award. Well, we did for Bob, not yeah. we did to Bob. No, we didn't do any <laughs> to him. We... Yeah. Um, I, I think it would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, she served a long time and served us very, very well, I might add. Absolutely. We have actually a gift on the way for Corrine, so as soon as it gets here, we'll do that recognition from the commission. Okay. So it's it's delayed, but it's on its way. Delayed. Back ordered. Yeah, it's, okay. Casey's taking care of it, it's, so hopefully it's, it's not going to be like the minutes. Done. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. How did Cheryl? <laughs> Cheryl did it. Yeah. That's. Oh, I like we're that. We're not going any no, deeper. No, we're not going to go any deeper than that. We'll blame Cheryl. She's not here after all. Right. Okay, anything further then, Les, on that? No, nope, thank you. Members of the City Council, Ms. Duran, what would you have to tell us today? Not a whole lot. Just, uh, we had uh, a transfer committee, what, what is it that you call us? The, the gang, gang of four. The yes. gang of four meeting? Yep. Okay. Uh, and it went well. Um, we have another meeting on Friday. So that will be what, meeting 11 or 12? 11, 12. 12. Okay. So, so very often, again. That often, gang of four is getting into this thing about frequent meetings? Is yes. that Okay. Yes, we are on a mission. Okay, good. That's good to hear. We should have something, um, hopefully, to report after Friday's meeting. Okay. M my only comment with regard to that is that we have a, an upcoming rate hearing scheduled for when? November. Yeah. November 12th. November 12th? Yep. yep. So it would be nice if all of us, and I'm using the royal all of us there, can come to a conclusion. Yep soon so that we can discuss rate increases with the public. Yep. And our, our, I believe our goal was to have an agreement by the beginning of November. Okay. The time for that meeting. Okay. You'd confirm that for I confirm that. And then one of the things I think we're going to talk about later as well when we talk about the budget in general is, is the approach we're taking as the group of, of four okay. plus the mayor. It's the gang of five really. Uh, and uh, to actually start talking about that within this group so we all uh, so are in agreement. You, so you've now included the mayor in your gang? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, that would be just fine, and uh, I, I'm assuming you're going to have a report for us tonight. Yep. Okay. Anything further, Heidi? Okay, thank you very much. Members of the Public Service Commission, anything to report? Well, the only thing I want to report on is the fact that we had an employee appreciation luncheon last week uh, that was well attended, number one, and it was wonderful to see our employees there and our past employees and some of our past commissioners. And uh, I might also add that uh, the same comment that I made during that meeting is that we are lucky to have the caliber and kind of employees that we have at Moorhead Public Service. And I'll say that to our 
two union groups, both IBEW and ASME employees, and both electrical and water employees that certainly do a great job, and our management staff as well. Uh, not only do we have the best record in terms of electric usage in this region, and I think I can say that unqualifiedly because that we are at four nines of service and hoping to get eventually to five if Joe would get some things right. And, uh, and that means 99.999%, but we also have the best tasting water in Minnesota again. And so we will continue to let our people know that that's the quality of product that we put out at more public service. And it also speaks well about the quality of our employees. For that, I thank all of them. Mr. General Manager. I have nothing uh, to report. That's refreshing. Mm -hmm. So we, can we go down then to the report at 8D on uh, the Oakport annexation process? We can certainly do that. And uh, at this meeting, I was explaining that uh, a bit earlier to someone, uh, we uh, kind of had this as a planning type meeting and, and Oakport is the first item on the agenda as far as just kind of having an open discussion about uh, the timeline, the process, kind of where we're headed on that. Um, first, maybe I'll just on my agenda here on my uh, iPad, I've got uh, the attachments that are included in this agenda item. So we've got the agenda item, and then we've got our policy on service extensions. That's one of the uh, attachments. And then we've got four maps, and I think those maps kind of give an indication of what some of the planning that's going on is, is entailing. The first map that we have is just a, a definition of the uh, territories uh, in Oakport. And territories, uh, what we mean by that is uh, there are two utilities that serve Oakport right now, um, XL Energy and Red River Valley Cooperative Power Association. That's the first map, just kind of shows the uh, territories. Uh, and then there's street light requirements. And so we put all the street lights on there, on this map, as they are currently uh, proposed if we follow the council's directive and, and the standards that currently exist between the uh, council and the Minnesota Department of Transportation. So, so back up just a moment for me, please. And I'm looking yep. at this map and we have multicolored uh, streetlight locations. Am I correct in stating that not all of these lights are in place today? Correct. Okay. And that the proposal or the possibility exists that we will be adding more street lights? Correct. And, and uh, your question, you know, jumping in there with questions is great. And, uh, Good, because I'll continue to do so. Oh, yeah, something. that's okay. perfect. Um, but that's also an indication of how the process has been going because nobody really kind of looks at some of these other details, but street lighting is an important issue up in Oakport. I am uh, anticipating that the council will deal with street lights uh, at some point and talk about their standards. And there's been discussions about a, like a rural uh, residential street light standard that uh, the council hasn't discussed, but I know it's been the topic of uh, the Oakport Joint Powers Board and other uh, community meetings, that type of thing. So I think that will continue to be discussed. And we haven't made any plans. I mean, this is a, a rough plan, if you will based on current standards, but it really was just a talking point for us. Uh, but I think there will be some continued discussions about street lights. If, I, if I'm correct, and if I, I can barely see this and I can't expand this, but it says the existing street lights are those marked in green. Uh, are we looking at adding all of these others? If we followed the standards right now? Or the current city standards. The current city standards, yes, we would. Okay. So I mean, if we're, and we have to be directed by the council to do it. So until they direct us to do it, we won't do it. And until we, we uh, actually serve that area, we won't do it. So we might be looking at end of 15 or beyond, before, or beyond before we would be doing this. So it's not like it's going to happen this winter. So I mean, we have some time. Let me ask you this. Do we know, and, and maybe I could direct this to Councilman Duran, Councilperson Duran. Do we know if there's, oh, she's not here. No. Oh. Do we know if there's been any discussion uh, concerning the addition of these with Oakport itself or the representatives of Oakport Township? Um, as far as street lights, they, we've had a community meeting. The city council put on a community meeting. We were a, a booth at that meeting 
And so we had a street light there. We had uh, um, this map was there. Um, we had a number of people coming and talking about a variety of issues and street lights were definitely one of those. Okay. So, I mean, we've, we've had that. We've also made presentations to the Oakport Joint Powers Board on two different occasions regarding street lights. So okay, there has been some discussion, has or not, about a street light utility and those types of things. What impacts, if any, would that discussion have on the implementation of this plan as I see it drawn out in front of us? Um, you know, the city council talked about the street light utility last night. Um, if they implement that uh, utility, I mean, that will be a utility under their jurisdiction. We provide the service for the city. Uh, they bill, you know, I mean, we bill for them, but they would be uh, bill for that service. As far as operations go, I mean, there wouldn't be really any change proposed at this time. So everything would carry on just as normal. We would still install and maintain street lights and we would also do so in the Oakport area as well. Okay, Les? I don't know this answer. That's why I'm asking the question. Um, within the city of Moorhead, in the various zoning options, and Heidi might know this answer, uh, are there different standards for street lighting depending on what how it's zoned? And if so, is Oakport zoned differently than any of the rest of Moorhead? If I can jump in a little bit, in my recollection when the um, annexation agreement was originally negotiated is that there was a different, more rural standard that was both talked about and implied by the document. Whether or not that exists, I'm not sure. I see the mayor shaking her head, yes, but I think there is a different standard. I don't know, and maybe well, either it's zoned, Joe or- It's zoned differently. It's zoned differently, but I don't know if we have a different is lighting there a standard. different standard for that type of zone? Maybe Joe or Travis can okay. come forward. Heidi is nodding her head as well, so. Yeah, there is a different standard, or you're not sure? It's my understanding that we have the authority to, to create a policy, yep. a, light, a street light policy for a different, like a rural residential. And that was, that, that's the plan. Right, and, and, and most subdivisions that come into the city, they have a standard primarily based on safety requirements right. and some other things. And I know that we are in the process of turning over to, or changing over to LEDs. Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming none of these are LEDs yet. No, so, but all the new ones would be, because that's our standard now, is yeah. everything that goes in is LED. Okay. So if you look at numbers, so right now we have about 101 street lights up there, and we would, under this plan, would add another 240, but that would be a full residential. Right. Right, so if, if, if the council decides to go less than full residential, it would be fewer street lights, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Here comes Travis. And from a budgeting perspective, sorry. From a budgeting perspective, uh, we wouldn't have to budget for this item, right? Because it would be in the city's budget. Or is um, it our well, budget? currently it would be no, in ours. Yeah, it would be in our budget to install, and then uh, we work it out through a. You know, some are assessed, but none of these will likely be assessed. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, they go into a repayment plan, a long-term repayment plan. So we up front in, in, in some cases, and especially residential areas, we up front that cost and then we charge the city a, a fee, so. So if we put up 150 or 250, whatever, 100 more lights in Oakport, so we do the work, we pull the, put up the poles, we supply the poles with power, but who pays for that? Is that something that comes out of our budget, so we need a budget for that, or is it something we then we, charge to the city? We have to budget for that. So that's one of the other items that we'll talk about a bit here is, is when do we do these infrastructure improvements? And right now we're looking at 2015 is installation. So that means by October 28th, the budget committee will have numbers, you know, to place in there in the budget for 2015. And, uh, but depending on negotiations, we may not get that done. That may go to 16. It may go to 16, but then we would have inventory a lot of inventory. Well, that's the other question I'm going to have for you in terms of maintaining inventory. Obviously, that's something that has to be discussed with, with the council and at this level because the, as I understand, the LED lights are substantially more expensive than the old lights, for one thing. I don't know what kind of an inventory we keep on those, uh, but all of those things have to be discussed. Travis, I see you've stepped up to the point. Would yeah. you identify yourself to our 
Sure. Friends at home. Travis Schmidt, electrical engineering manager. Ralph had the question of all of these lights and will they be installed? Some of the areas like Highway 75, um, Oakport Street, and then uh, Wall Street, those are uh, MnDOT or county county roads as well. So those would have to be discussed with with MnDOT. So th those may not be put in, um, and that's a question that we need to get answered from MnDOT or Clay County to see if they're wanting to have those installed. Are those the ones that we have in red here? Um, you can't see it. Yeah, that probably. One. I got. Probably right, right, yeah. 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 And what about those blue and purple ones you've got on there? I can't tell. So, yeah. Can you put it up? You want to put it up, please? Um, Casey's going to put it up. Does that mean people at home can see it as well? Good job, Casey. Yeah, the, the red lights would be the lights that would be needed to discuss with, with Clay Mindot? County and MnDOT, probably. And then... Yeah. And would we have, do we have an option there, how many to put in, or is it then part of the discussion with MnDOT to decide how many have to go in? We would have to discuss with them. They'd probably do some type of traffic analysis to see if it would be warranted. Travis, why don't you tell us what the colors are? Sure. The, the, the green lights are, if I'm correct, all those are existing street lights. The blue would be the proposed new lights, and if I'm right, the purple ones are yard lights. Yep. Oh, okay. So the blue ones would be the new residential lights if we followed existing City. Existing city standards. Standards, currently. okay. But, and we've not discussed any standard, or is there a standard for this that rural subdivision? This would be the existing city residential standard. Okay. I'm assuming for a rural area, it may be less street lights, But then the city would have to make a safety decision on whether or not they thought that appropriate. You know, most of, yeah, most of these areas, it follows, um, if you look at the Crystal Creek area, the lower part where it's got a bunch of blue there, we basically just follow the, the Crystal Creek lighting there and just okay. kind of base the, the footages off of what already existed to try do you know, to match Do you it. know what kind of an inventory we keep on hand for those lights? Um, not a lot. We try to you know, minimize how much we have on hand so that if there's something that gets knocked over, we've got several to replace it. And then we keep, as we're converting to new LEDs, we have so many on hand for that okay. as well. Thank Probably you. 30 to 40. Bless. I have another question. Uh, when Americana Estates came into the city a few years ago, there was also discussion about street lighting out there, and there were disagreements between what the city standard was and what the residents of Americana Estate wanted. Mm -hmm. What eventually happened out there? Nothing. Nothing. That's I knew that answer, so I thought I'd ask it. Well, it's actually not nothing because yeah, on the nothing. Oh, yeah on the outs, on the major thoroughfares there's a street light. There's you know, if you know Americana Estates, it's kind of triangular shape with two streets running through it yep. and on the end of each street so four you know lights four rather large lights uh for the intersection lights are located out there on the inside there's probably about i don't know three or four or five more that probably about five or six lights that weren't, weren't installed but they are the same number of lights within the residential part as it was yeah. before it was annexed and is that correct, correct. yes yeah in in inside the interior. residential area. Yep, in yep. the interior. And Next I year we cover So one, one might even transpose that to Oakport and say that they may have considerably less than Wait. what is indicated on our map. But could end I, up with. Could I do a follow-up to your question, though? Did, did, I'm making comments. Well, I understand that. <laughs> and, and you're doing very well with them. When, when Americana came in, was there a revision to their zoning? Are they in that, I mean, I don't think how so. are they zoned? I think they're just zoned residential. So they would come under the cities because I know I don't think with the city had the same agreement with them that they would have a rural flavor so, guaranteed right. to them like they will for Oakport. Well, I don't think there's any different standard. I'm not sure what they're zoned, but I'm guessing it's residential. So we should be putting up more lights is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that, that could be done at any time. Okay. Nobody is really petitioned. Okay one way or the other if they want lights or not. I just know when we had town meetings for Americana Estates, street lights are a very uh, controversial thing. It, it just seems like half the people want more and then the other half don't want more. There was so, a considerable number at Americana that did not want any right. more lighting out there. Well, and especially the kind that we had at that time. Now, Travis could talk about the new night sky compliant LED lights, which uh, don't shine uh, 
I mean, if you look at them, you actually don't see much light off to the side. They just direct down. And so there's a well, lot. That of, depends upon which one Joe picks. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, they are, there's different types. But they're getting away from, you know, shining it out so they shine, like, say, on everybody's home so that you don't really see them from the street. They're more of a street light. So who's, who's talking to the Old Port residents on what they want, number one? And number two, when will council make a decision on what lighting should be? Because from a budget perspective, we need to, we need to know that, right? Do we plan for 250 more lights, or is it a matter of we leave what we currently have? So who's actually talking to uh, the Old Port residents about this? Well, we've talked to them, again, at the community meetings. Um, we've talked a couple of times to the Oak Port Joint Powers Board. Um, you know, really, we would follow the standard that the council directs us to. I mean, really, we don't own, we don't own that decision. Um, so, I mean, we would wait for the council to direct us because that's what the charter says. Yep. Well, let, let me ask a question in that, in that regard. <clears throat> Let's say, for example, that we don't necessarily come in and begin service on January 1st, 2015, which is fully what you and I expect to happen. We will not take over that quickly. Correct. So then the service or the lines are owned by XL Energy in certain portions and by Red River Valley Co-op in other portions. However, the street lighting mandates belong to the city. Does that mean that we would be putting in street lights if we didn't take over? Well, we're not serving. We no. Be serving. Yeah, we, we serve really. The area, so we we're in. not serving the area, but the, the city is the, the one who's responsible for the street lights. That's why I asked the question. It's sort of a never never land, isn't it? Yep. It, it is a never never land. There's a few of those, I believe. And, uh, you know, there's going to be some you know, discussions, I'm sure, about service and service quality and who gets to serve and is there a franchise fee and those types of things when someone other than more public service is going to be serving that area on January 1st, 2015. Yeah. But I don't have the answers to all those questions. Well, now you know that the questions have been asked. Les? I think, uh, and I brought a, uh, Americana up for a reason because I do believe that we have a precedent out there and I remember back when the annexation took place, uh, there was going to be no complete agreement out there with that group of people. <laughs> and I know some of the people out there and, and they're Wonderful friends of mine and I know some of the people up at Oakport and I guarantee some of them have exactly the same feelings. So if this happens in 2016, I might even be surprised. So you're not putting any money on this? Program. I'm not putting any money on that. Okay. But we could, we could <laughs> gently ask Heidi to bring back to the uh, city council uh, our, our concerns, if you will, that uh, we get a little more direction on what might happen. Yeah, I, I think that's a very legitimate lesson. I think it's a great, great request of our liaison. First, yep, I have uh, my questions written out. I Thank have you. my little Thank ask Michael these questions. So. Well, in the interest, you know, Saturday I attended the Concordia Parade along with my grandchildren, and I was standing next to some people from Oakport Township, and the people in Oakport are very interested on what is going to happen and what are we going to do. And they asked me specifically because I'm with more public service in a strange capacity, but I, my only answer to the question is I really don't know what the answer is. Well, we're going to talk about those in the coming uh, minutes. But you still won't have an answer even in the coming <laughs> no. minutes. Okay. No. And no. that's, that's part of the reason why we're having the discussion tonight. Yep. Because uh, there are a whole bunch of, of issues out there we don't know the answers to. And some are with our control, some are outside of our control. Um, you know, uh, Travis does the two streets you mentioned, uh, I can't remember which two they were. Wall Street, Highway 75, and yep. 11th Street. Do those or? two uh, areas for lighting conform to the county and state standards today? Um, no, there actually are. There's no lights there right now. There so aren't any. That's why we would need to have them probably do some type of a traffic analysis to see if it warrants. And how long lighting. has the standard been in place that they've been out I mean, of compliance? You know, Years? I don't know if they're, I guess I'm not saying they are out of compliance. Oh. I'm just saying that they are, they don't have any lights out there right now. I, I, Okay, so I would we don't assume know that whether that, they are compliant or not. Yeah. Okay. I would assume that that compliance, however, has been out of our control up until the earliest it of January It has nothing 1st. to do with our control. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. 
Shall I carry on? Yes, feel free. Let me. Uh, Didn't mean to interrupt you. Well, no, yes, no, we no, did. that's fine. We really yeah. did. We'll, yeah, we'll did. come around to those again. Uh, the last two um, attachments, one is a proposed underground feeder diagram, and the other is the electric infrastructure. The so those are some of the other major planning items that we have to uh, discuss. Um, let me let me go back to the agenda real quick and then just talk a little bit more about in, be, instead of talking about infrastructure just yet let's talk about uh, a little more of the process and if you look back on the agenda the first major section there is the policy on service extensions the um, thing to remember about the policy is uh, that we have one uh, number two it directs us to provide service when areas of Moorhead are annexed into the into the city and what I mean by that is that more public service would provide the uh, electric service and water service in those areas um, we have provided water service since uh, around 1990 and now uh, electric service uh, as we've discussed would not happen on January 1st 2015 but it would happen at some point into the future the other thing that's in the uh, policy is a surcharge and the surcharge is you know, a recovery mechanism for uh, some of the costs we have to, that we incur to buy out the electric service territory. So it just applies to the electric service territory? Just the electric service territory. On the, on the water side, there actually is a 50% additional charge that all the residents have been paying for close to 25 years now. And on January 1st, that would go down to our regular water rate. So that was all agreed to in the, in the Oakport annexation agreement. Uh, the other thing that was agreed to is the so surcharge. Hard, so the water rates will actually go, go down. down on They'll the go down by 50%, yep. Cool. The rates won't go down, but the net payable surcharge. will. Yep. yep, yep. So there's a 50% surcharge and that'll go away January 1st. Um, the surcharge for the electric service buyout is uh, one that was also agreed to in the annexation agreement. And uh, there's actually two different surcharges, one for XL Energy customers and one for Red River Valley Cooperative Power customers. On an annual basis, the commission sees a report, you're actually gonna see it at the next meeting, that calculates, based on this contract and our policy, uh, the uh, surcharge for each of those. And for, I know what they are already because I saw the draft Dennis showed me today, um, for XL Energy, they're one and a half cents per kilowatt hour. And for Red River, it would be two cents per kilowatt hour. It's 2.2 .2 cents right now. It would be proposed to be at two cents next year. It's half the difference between their rates and our rates. Yep. Let's make sure that people understand, we're not gonna charge people in Oakport more than they're currently paying. We're actually charging them less. Yes. But they are paying more than the normal more customers. Exactly. Right. So let's make sure that the rates are going to go down that's yep. not going to go down all the way to right all right okay yep i mean xl energy customers would see about a 15 percent reduction in their electricity costs and the red river valley um, co-op customers would see about a 20 percent reduction uh, in their costs so is that including water and electricity that's just electricity or just electricity okay water is going to be a 50 percent reduction in their costs so um, so that's, that's the policy, and again, if, if, it directs us to provide service to, uh, to those areas once they're annexed. How do we do that? That's the uh, next area. Um, service territory, we call it negotiation with those two exiting utilities. And President Norman and uh, Commissioner Meeland is on the, uh, they're both on the negotiating committee. Um, and basically we just get together with the, the officials of those two utilities and discuss, um, you know, the buyout costs and uh, make proposals basically back and forth. In the American States case, we took that all the way to the Supreme Court and, um, you know, ended up at about 3.3 cents per kilowatt hour that we ended up paying, you know, over a 10 year period to acquire those customers. So that's really the, the price, the starting price that I know Red River Valley and Excel Energy are starting at. And then we'll basically be trying to negotiate that down from there. 
Um, we've only had one meeting with Red River Valley Cooperative Power Association. And we've had, uh, on the staff level, we've had uh, a couple of meetings with Excel. Um, both really have kind of taken the position and said, until it's annexed, we really aren't interested in talking. Um, and I, I should say that's really what Excel has said. Um, Red River has met with us, and we may get somewhere before January 1st. You know, we'll see, because we have a meeting. We had one meeting, and then now we had well, we had one meeting in July, and now one meeting in October. So, I mean, there's quite a space there, but uh, scheduling those meetings were difficult. At anyway. this juncture, we should probably explain to our customers and to our soon-to-be customers in Oakport Township, if they're able to get this presentation, that uh, the process with the co-op and with uh, XL Energy is an ongoing process, and that will be the, the manner in which those discussions continue will be, uh, will tell us when it, we will be actually taking over. And we're going to try to be as innovative as possible, and I think Rolf would agree with me there, that it's a rather complex formula when it comes to reimbursing the uh, co-op for their costs. And so from that standpoint, we may even decide to do something with the utility to allow them to continue their service for a longer period of time so that we can reduce the impacts of that acquisition. So we're going to try to think, I hate to use this term, but outside of the box to some degree, uh, to, to see if we can't come up with something new. And that's, that's a good point also in our policy. We have the policy to join, when we have annexed uh, territory, to join and provide service, but it doesn't really say when we have to do that. Uh, and this, this could be one of those instances. I mean, first of all, we will not do it on January 1st when it comes to electric. Again, water's done. That's, that's already in place. Um, we will not do it on January 1st because we won't even have an agreement with, uh, with the two, uh, two other parties involved. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be quite costly. Say, say if we go with that 3.8 uh, cent per kilowatt hour rate, if that were the agreement in the end, what's the amount of money we're talking about here? 3.3. 3.3, I'm yep. sorry, 3.3. Yep. Um, you know, we don't have, yeah, we don't have a accurate, uh, you know, kilowatt hour sales data from uh, Red River Valley Cooperative and Xcel Energy. You know, we can estimate based on, you know, Americana State's customers. Um, but you're, you know, it is, com it is a complex formula, so, I mean, that's going to be part of the discussion. There's loss of revenues, which is the kilowatt hour sales times the, you know, whatever rate that 3.3 cents over a 10 year period, that's very common. And that is going to be several million dollars. And then there's infrastructure that we have to buy. And they basically take the depreciated book value of all the transformers, all the lines, all the poles, all the equipment that's out there. And uh, that's, you know, a million dollars or several million dollars, I would say. And then there is also, um, uh, let's see, just uh, kind of blank my mind. Um, so you got infrastructure, you got the uh, loss of revenues, and um, well, you got the, the infrastructure cost to get up there. So you've got the, the feeder that we have to build up there in order to, to buy that out. Oh, and then the other one was XL Energies is a different voltage than ours. So their system has to be entirely rebuilt. The good news is they're the smaller utility of the two utilities up there. So the Red River Valley Co-op is about two thirds of the customers. XL is about one third. Red Rivers is actually the same voltage as ours. So the transition is actually fairly easy. Uh, just go up there and plug it in and it's be ready to go change the meters and we're done. Uh, we did that in American States. It actually, the conversion actually went pretty well. Um, for XL though, it's going to be really a total rebuild of the of the whole system and we're looking right now whether we do it you know it's all overhead now and overhead is notorious for wind problems with trees and squirrels and those types of things so if we're going to rebuild the whole system is now the time to put it underground the problem with putting it underground and we tried this in Americana states uh, we couldn't get people to agree that everybody would do it or that they would give us easements. And we do need easements in order to put the system in place. So then you're looking at 
how to get easements and if not everybody's going to agree but you got 80 percent of the easements you still have to get the other 20 percent and that means condemnation or some other type of action in order to do that so so there's nothing in the uh, in the agreement itself that talks about the easements and and any of that it's, it's each each owner on his or her own yep yeah we, the, the basic agreement was with the township not with the residents so. okay. yeah so in there you know there's a lot of detail with easements that would have to occur and there but there's nothing in there that says you will give us an easement either our rules and regulations say you'll give us an easement and we don't pay anything for it. So, I mean, that's... Well, new subdivisions would have those easements already granted right. to the municipality, but I'm going to assume, given the length of time over which that whole area was developed, that there would probably not be any formal easements in place for the utilities currently serving. No. Were there, were there easements granted at the time that the water service was put in um, when we went out there and started serving the water services? Not to my knowledge. Okay. So how did we do that? I it think was probably all in the road right -aways. And then services we did are... did not use exist? No, it was new. It was all, it was all new. new. It was yeah. new. That's right, it was new. Yeah. Because it had to be built to our standards. Yeah. We might want to check that out, Chris, to find out under what authority of law we're sitting where we're sitting. Right, John? Yes, well, we've got authority to have the water tower where we have it. But, but we don't uh, know about the distribution system itself. No, we don't know about the distribution. <laughs> and It well, might have just grown like topsy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anything further, Bill? Well, um, we talked a little bit more about the buyout costs and uh, we talked about the surcharge. We also need to remember that uh, one of the exemptions that uh, the city council has granted allows us to uh, not count kilowatt hour sales for Oakport. And um, this is gonna be very important when it comes to Oakport because that's gonna be our major recovery mechanism because we will have, we will have the rates, you know, and if we don't have to provide the city with a transfer there, that will be a recovery method for you know, roughly one half of the uh, um, the cost of acquisition. Cost. Yeah, so uh, it's going to be important. That's been a discussion in our negotiations with the uh, the council over the the agreement. So, yeah, but it is very important right now. And then, from a budget perspective, we just need to figure out, you know, first of all, when we're going to do this, and then how we're going to fund the initial, you know, whether it's the buyout or whether it's the uh, replacement of equipment, how we're going to do that. And that's one of the reasons we need to have this this discussion right now. And the number one item is, um, when do we want to do this? Now, of course, we are dependent a little bit on the, on the two utilities, Red River and XL, but from our perspective here, you know, is this something that we want to do in 2015? Uh, it's not gonna happen on January 1st, we know that, but maybe it happens in August, and if you want to do that in 2015, then we need to budget for that. You know? Well, and, and the reason is because we would have to order uh, materials and we typically, I think it's the end of November, Travis, when we, uh, we, you'll see specs, you know, for all the transformers, all the wire, all, the, all of this and all that. And we can do an alternate to that bid, but that is our main one bid for the, for the year. And, uh, you know, of course, if we order it, then we'd like to put it in. I mean, that's going to be a discussion with uh, the cooperative and the investor-owned utility we're going to negotiate with. Less. When I did bids on computer stuff, uh, we tended to put in the bid specs that the price bid would be honored for X amount of additional. Do we do that? We could do it for the, the alternate I'm talking about, too. Yeah. And, you know, you could either do it in alternate or you could say, you know, here's our estimate, but it could be significantly higher than that. Right, and, and let's, they would let's say we ordered 100 units of it. We knew we needed 100 units, but we may need another 50 in right. seven months. Right. And if we put in the bid specifications that the price for the 100 units would be honored for another 50, whether we bought them or not. Yep, and then it's delivery is the big issue because if we're gonna do it in 15, we have to order it, What? right? It depends on when you order it, but what's the delivery time? But it yeah. does push it out a little bit. Yeah. 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 There. Okay. So there's a couple of parts to that. 
um, will be coming out in October. Our next meeting, actually, we'll be bringing those bid specs to you guys for authorized yeah. advertisement. Um, the issue or how wire gets bid out is we go out for pricing and lead times, and we try to do that in the fall because we get a little, it gets, it gets here sooner. Um, we do have an escalation factor that we have to deal with with wire because um, wire is based, they base the cost based on the time of delivery. The minute that wire leaves the factory is what you pay for the cost. Based so, on the cost of the commodity? On the cost of the commodity. So we may get it ordered in November and it may not ship till February. We pay whatever that cost is based off the February date. That's convenient. And then, of course, does we have. Mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Does that mean we? Um, does that mean we could we could do multiple orders? You could set it up for multiple orders, or schedule it out so that wire shows up on X dates. Um, right. I mean, you just pay the cost based off that data delivered. The difference in cost. Yep. On the extra date. Yep. And if we put in the bid specs that yeah, we could set it up. We as may want to get some in August as opposed to February. Yep, you could do that. The only difference would be the extra charge. Yep. It, okay. You may want to consider yep. putting some language. We're going to. That's yeah, a good suggestion, be, Wes. There'll be something in there with on the alternates, um, just okay. based off the factors of not sure whether we're going to do this in 15 or not. Right. So. I've got, figure out. I've got two questions, Bill. Mm -hmm. Number one, based on our history with Red River Valley Co-op. Do we anticipate, do you anticipate that that takeover would in fact happen in 2015? Or are we looking 216 and beyond? Well, as uh, Commissioner Meehlin mentioned, it's very possible that we could negotiate an agreement that would delay action for a period of time in place of a buyout. Um, and I believe that could happen rather soon if they're, you know, interested in something like that. We'll know at the next meeting. In fact, we kind of need to know at the next meeting so that we can decide if we're going to order equipment. I'm thinking that we would talk to them at the next meeting. We would give them a 30 day period to decide. And then, cause we have to decide if we're going to order equipment or not. If we order equipment, then we start the heavy negotiations about what price will we pay. If we want to pay 3.3 .3 cents per kilowatt hour, it's a done deal. We could have that done probably by end of this year. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah, because they're gonna because that's where they're at right now. They haven't formally said that, but talking with their CEO, uh, he said, "Well, you know where we're at, you know." So I mean, we could work out those details rather quickly. I believe that we're going to look at a lower price. I mean, both for our pocketbook and for the residents and what they're going to pay in a surcharge. Um, that's why I think the first option is a is actually a good one. Um, however, they're going to have something to say about that as well because they're going to be paying the higher rates for a period of time. So, I mean, we have to uh, negotiate with them. And as far as the timing goes, it all depends on which option that we choose. Now, here's another interesting caveat. In southern Minnesota right now, there's a, a joint uh, venture of cooperative power associations that are purchasing a number of customers from an investor-owned utility out of Iowa that reach into Minnesota. And so there's a, a, a large number of uh, residential and small commercial customers, small towns, and I mean, even Albert Lee is one of the towns, not small town, but I mean, everywhere from, you know, outside of Worthington to Albert Lee on the southern edge of Minnesota, there's a number of customers being purchased by cooperatives from an investor-owned utility. Um, the deal was all done behind closed doors, but they do have to go through the Public Utilities Commission in Minnesota uh, to consummate the deal. And of course, the Public Utilities Commission would be just like this commission, interested in you know, what's the reliability going to be for those customers, what's the price going to be for those customers. And you know, they're getting some information from this joint cooperative group, but not as much information as we would like. Of course, we would like information on what a willing buyer and a willing seller uh, you know, uh, agreed to on a per kilowatt hour basis. And if we're armed with that information, basically we go and say, 
hey, this is a more reasonable price. Effectively, that gives us a comparable. Yeah. Now, just right at this time, I mean, the Public Utility Commission of Minnesota just delayed, they actually are asking for more comments based on some correspondence that uh, MMUA and Kayla Brennan have provided to the PUC. Um, what we're asking for is a contested case, which is sounds probably more negative than what it is, but it just provides more information about the whole um, transaction that we would like to see because, again, we're looking to see what a willing buyer and a willing seller are uh, paying for this. And it's a, it's a complicated... Uh, it's a complicated venture, and, and their attorney, and you know, the cooperative's attorney is Hap Lavander, and their uh, engineer on the case is, uh, oh, what's his name from, I should know it, but it, it will come to me. Ken, you know the name, if I'd say it, so. Um, so effectively, Hap has come out of retirement, so it must be a lucrative practice to go after the well, municipal least, utilities. Well, you know, I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's a big deal for the cooperatives in the state of Minnesota. It's a big deal for us. We're watching it very closely. That is, inter is happening at an interesting time as we're gonna be going in and negotiating. I'm a little afraid we're not gonna have that information That information yeah. for our next meeting. Les? Uh, just to remind me, Bill, uh, how many months was it between the annexation of American Estates and the final settlement? The annexation, I believe, was January 1st of 05, and I don't think we served it till the summer of eight. Nine. So it was three years. So it was it was January of '06 yeah. to summer of '09. So three years. So it was over three years. Yep. So we may give us some guidelines as to what it, we might expect. To. It is. I think you know we didn't know as much about it then. I think. Uh, well, they didn't either, perhaps. Right. But I mean, the the cooperative and the investor owned have already showed signs of delay, and so they're not interested in, in getting anything done rather quickly, but so we're going to have to push. Yeah. I, I mean, was, I was our, responding to the, the yeah. chairman's question of whether you expect it in yeah. 15, and I really don't. So, right. Well, but I think there's people in Oakport that are going to be expecting it, expecting us to work very well, hard. Then the order. people in Oakport can start making some noises to their... Exactly. The, the yep. people on the board at Red River Valley Co-op. Exactly. And my second question is really more posed to you, Nancy, because you made a comment... Uh, or Bill made a comment that we will see a reduction in the water revenues coming from Oakport Township. Have we quantified that dollar amount, the reduction? Estimated at 40000 annually. Okay. But I'm sure Dave and Rolf will want to know that information. Would you, would you repeat that? Yeah, yeah. Nancy answered that the <laughs> reduction in revenues because of Oakport coming in uh, from the water utility will be approximately $40,000 because of that premium that they were paying when they when we provided water to them outside of our city limits okay anything further on this subject not unless there's questions we seem to have gone a long way down a road where we don't see the end of the road well and the you know two commissioners that are negotiating are getting into much more detail on this so um at a, another meeting we'll provide an update wonderful I mean, but, but back to my so i do have a question i guess or a statement so, so are we all in agreement that we are okay if it did not happen in 2015? We're going to try our best, right? But it may not happen in 2015. Heck, it may not even happen in 2016. De depending upon what we can negotiate. Depending on what we can negotiate, right? I mean, Americana took two and a half years, three and a half years. Uh, we're going to try our best to do it in as, as quickly as possible. But again, January 1st, 2015 is not going to happen. Period. It just can't physically happen. Not for electricity. No, nope, not for water is fine. Not for electricity, uh, but it may even be pushed to 2016. So that's so people are okay with that. Yes. Right. I think on this board we don't have much of a choice. No, we don't. Yeah. Just. We're we're not necessarily fully in control of that issue. But to your point, if if the question come from the re new residents saying, "Where is my reduction?" that people understand that, hey, we're working on that because the reduction will only happen once we annex, and we can only annex once we have an agreement with the current providers. Provider, exactly. Right. Very good point, Rolf. Yep. I move to exec 8B. Is there a second to that? Aye, second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. That brings us down to 8E. 
which is to accept a report to review the strategic plan, which was tabled on September 23rd. So I'm assuming we have to have a motion to take I it off the table. I move to remove item 8E from the table. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That brings us to 8E, which is to uh, the report on the draft strategic plan. And I, I think that one or more of us had a few questions relative to it. I think, David, you had some questions on the strategic plan. Uh, actually, at this point, no, I don't. Are you telling me I was wrong? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. I do remember that, that Commissioner Anderson was the one that wanted to wait and review it. Yeah, I do, uh, but, but I have another idea for that, um, uh, which we could discuss now. Or let's, you know, if you want to get your calendars out, we're on that item, out. so let's talk about if it. If you want to get your calendars out, um, um, I, I presented an idea to our chairman earlier in the week that that would involve um, committing um, uh, two or three hours on a probably a Saturday to uh, to, to really having more of a strategic discussion uh, that uh, uh, with our with our general manager but um, I'd, I'd like to suggest that, that we that we have what would be uh, a strategic planning retreat and take uh, take a few hours to to, to really go, kind of go through this you know the last couple of years you know the first couple of years that I've been involved in this we we give it we give it a little bit of time over a few minutes at, at one of these meetings uh, in amongst all the other topics and we I, I don't think we give it give it the kind of uh, discussion that it's worth um, so I, I'd like to suggest that that we find uh, find a couple of hours where this is the agenda and and really and, and really have a have a good look at our future as opposed to a glance at our future so that's that's the idea um, if, if we could come up with a date, then I'd be glad to, to make a motion that would, that would okay. uh, create that. Members of the commission, what do you think about that? I, I, Mr. Chair, I know there are other organizations that do that. As a matter of fact, I'm on the Clay County Historical Society board, and on Thursday of this week, we are doing that very same thing. We're, the board is meeting for several hours and discussing future plans and, and strategic goals, the whole issue. So. I believe even this. I mean, even I believe the city council does similar things early, early in the uh, calendar year. I didn't mean to say. Are you suggesting that we follow the city council and everything they do? I am just suggesting <laughs> that there are other organizations within the city of Moorhead that that do as uh, Dave is suggesting, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay, Casey, have you already looked at the, some potential dates off into the future? I haven't. Talked about the dates. Okay. Are we looking in early November, perhaps? I would suggest that we do that. You know, let's let's uh, let's let's find a, a date that works for us. If if Casey can can survey us so that we can compare our calendars, but I, I would really like. Should to we look at the eighth or the fifteenth? Sure. Have a location here in City Hall, or we can get together. Yeah, and perfect. Why don't you check that out, Casey, and get back to us? And so, at this point, then, what do you want to do with regard to the strategic plan? Do we want to put it back on the table? It, it is on the table. Oh, you know, uh, no, it's not. You I have a couple of questions, okay. first of all, we about uh, procedure, I guess. Uh, will this be a public meeting? I think it has to be. Okay. Would it be a televised public meeting? Not if we're in the boardroom. It would be if we were out here. Um, okay. Should it be a televised meeting, I guess, is the question, because I... I I don't think uh, meetings, whether it's televised or not, it should be dependent on the location. It should be dependent on other things. Why don't we use the um, compass room in the water plant? Because that's hooked up for televising, isn't it? Uh, or we can go down here. This, like this, room, this room is the only spot within the city buildings that I'm aware of that can easily, easily do meetings. Uh, MCAM can set up nearly any uh, meeting, including the boardroom over there, uh, with enough notice because it has internet connection and that's all really needed because on Saturday they did the candidates forum at the library. So the location, as long as that internet access is uh, really sort of immaterial. Well, my, my real question is, should it be televised? 
can I express an opinion relative Please to that? Please do. As far as I'm concerned, any meeting of this august body, except for closed session, should be televised and available to the public. I think there's an absolute right for the public to know what we're discussing. And the same with the council. I think if we're discussing a topic that impacts the general public, and impacts the operation of more public service, there's an absolute right of the public to know. So my, my feeling, if somebody's asking me, is that we have it, we can meet down here, yeah. and then do just like the, the city council does on the committee of the whole meeting, so the public can see our deliberations. If they disagree with us, they can let us know. Although I believe the planning retreat for the city is not televised. Am I correct on that or not? It's audio. It's audio recording. I think it, we'd have to by statute. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good idea to be televised. Uh, I, I would like it if we if, if we uh, met down there so that we are seated more uh, around a table. You know, looking at you your shoulders and the, the sides of your faces is one thing. But in, in a conversation <laughs> like this, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like for us to be around a table where we you know, okay. uh, actually have a, a, a bit more of a of a conversation as opposed to a meeting. You'd prefer to see my face? No, no, okay. actually, I'd, yeah. I just yeah, thought I'd ask. Yeah. If, yeah. if, if televising is what we want to do, and I agree with both of you, uh, I would really recommend would, this Would you note that in the minutes, by the way? Any other spot. Would he agreed with both of us? <laughs> <laughs> I, so Casey, any objections to what we've been saying by either of none you? That, none whatsoever. Why don't we look for a date that we can meet down here and be televised and and yeah. have a nice open discussion relative to our strategic plan? Depending on any time schedule, do you right. think it was televised immediately or just rebroadcast later? Is that rebroadcast right here? Is rebroadcast is fine, I think, I, too. I, if it's a Saturday, there won't be an issue. Okay. okay. MCAM does not broadcast anything live on Saturday. Okay. Okay, all of that having been said, then in case he's going to. In that case, I move to table <laughs> <laughs> item 8P. Put it on the table. And request that MPS staff uh, arrange a Saturday meeting fitting our schedules. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. That Aye. motion passes. That's table. Thank you, Les. Okay. Thank you, Casey. Please Thank you, Dave. Thank let you. us know. That brings us down to item F, which is a report on the 2015 budget. And quite frankly, I th I'm looking forward to this discussion because as I mentioned earlier in the meeting, uh, we're moving rapidly toward a rate hearing. And I really would like to understand where we're at with regard to the budget. Uh, and so, Bill, budget committee, what have you got to say for yourselves? I can, I can begin if you want. Um, as was mentioned earlier in this meeting, uh, we are in the middle of our budget season. October is where the Morehead Public Service Commission and the staff and the budget committee uh, get together and, and really uh, hash over the budget hard. Um, until that time, and really we don't have it yet, uh, but somewhere between the first and second meeting, we get our wholesale power costs uh, firmed up. So we really don't start um, finalizing our budget until October. The budget committee did meet last uh, Friday. Uh, they typically meet between the two meetings in October. Uh, our meetings are today the 14th and then uh, two weeks from now on the 28th. By the 28th, we really need to firm up most of our uh, budgetary numbers so that we can be prepared for our rate hearing, which is November 12th. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the timeline of the process and really the, the process. Um, what we have ongoing other than, you know, wholesale power is our biggest expense. So that's really hard to finalize a budget or, or set a rate until we get uh, that nailed down. We're looking at MRAS having an 8.6% increase. 50% uh, of that is 4.3. So there's a good starting number. Uh, we're talking with the, the city and negotiating on the transfer. That's, a, that's in addition to the 4.3. That's what we're currently looking at. Um, I think one of the things, this is, this is uh, report number three, and I think what we really wanted to focus on on report number three was the discussions that have been taking place on our second largest uh, expense, if you will, and that's the transfer. Um, so 
we've got in here some of the discussions about the working group. We've got an example of how the formula would work. And it's just an example, it's not a proposal. Uh, but we do have a proposal attached also, which is the proposal that um, was provided to the working group that uh, provided a, uh, some details as to what the formula would be and then some discussions that came out of the working group regarding a floor um, and some of that. Following this agenda item is the policy on determination of uh, net and gross revenues. And so that'll be what you have to look forward to in a few minutes after the thorough discussion, I believe is what the president wanted regarding uh, this formula idea that we came up with in the, in the uh, budget committee. Well, in terms of the wants and needs of the chairman, uh, my only concern is that we as a body understand the concepts that have gone into the discussion with the gang of four or five, and so that we have some familiarity with the concepts that are part and parcel of those discussions. And uh, to this date, we've not had any in-depth discussions relative to the budgets at, at this level, and I think we should, because uh, we're, we're going to have a rate hearing soon, and I want us to all understand exactly what the implications of those rate hearings will be uh, long term. As, as they impact our customers. We, we saw rates that were set previously for small businesses in Moorhead. We had some small businesses who took exception to those rates. We responded as soon as we possibly could. But we also know that we have large customers out there that want to know where our rates are going. And we certainly have people on fixed incomes in this community and, and other people who also want to know where these rates are going to go. And so from that standpoint, this budget process is very important to us. And so. Let's have at it. Tell us what's going on. The, um, so I, you know, as I can answer questions or I can continue and just kind of walk through the um, agenda item if you would like. Or Let's just talk about, the, I think, the big ticket items okay. uh, on, the, on a structured perspective. Mm -hmm. And again, the reason we have not talked about it in this group is because we haven't been at a place yet where we thought we were coming to an agreement. And uh, after our last meeting, meeting number 11, uh, uh, we have a, a good feeling about where we can go between the two bodies and where we can end up. Uh, and where we may end up, again, depending on both bodies' uh, approval, is actually with something we have never done before, which is actually come to an agreement, a formal agreement between the two bodies to say, here's what we're going to do for hopefully a number of years. Uh, the way we have discussed this so far is that we've said, okay, uh, there's two parts to this. There's 2015 coming up. We need to do something about 2015. And then there's the years after that. And we have proposed uh, three years after that. And the way we have looked at this so far is to say, listen, we understand that the uh, city has higher needs in 2015 for a number of reasons. So is there a way for us to do something with a transfer in 2015, which would be a little bit higher than, or would be higher than 2014. But after that, base the transfer on the amount of kilowatt hours used by our customers. And we're talking only about the electric side. The water side, we're fine, and the other items, we're fine as well. The big item here is the electric side. I guess that's the biggest part of the transfer. Think of eight million, eight some million, that's about six. So it's, it's about uh, three six quarters, two. six, six, two. So the idea would be to say, OK, for 2015, we have a fixed amount, an agreed amount. Uh, and then for uh, 16, 17, and hopefully 18, we'll just base the transfer on the the amount of uh, kilowatt hours used by our customers multiplied by an agreed multiplier. Uh, and we have, uh, I think in principle, we have talked about that. We have actually some numbers on the table. Uh, the original proposal from city staff had been to have a transfer of about 6.7 to 6.8 million for 2015. Uh, and I think we all came to a conclusion very quickly that that was uh, very high and too high for us to swallow. Uh, the last transfer we had was roughly $6 million, so that would have been a 10, 12% increase. The number we're talking about now for 2015 uh, would be about 635 uh, for that one year. And then going forward, you would base the kilowatt hours, or put base the transfer on kilowatt hours. So any increases uh, on the transfer for the following years would be based on additional consumption. Now, what we've seen in the past couple of years, uh, or a rough average, is that uh, our consumption has gone up 
and correct me wrong, first of all, Bill, our cons consumption has always gone up except for one time in 08, 09, right? Yeah, I'd have to look at it. It's, it's it flat in one generally day. always gone up. There was just that one year after the recession that I remember it went sideways. I don't even know if it went down much. It was just flat, right? Yeah. It was about flat. So uh, roughly what we are using for our budgeting purposes, uh, we're using about a 1.5% increase uh, year over year as a, as a guidance going forward. Uh, and so if that were true, the city would receive 1.5% increase uh, year over year. If the increase is 4% in a year, then the the transfer would go up because more kilowatt hours would be used. So increase in transfer would not require us to raise rates to pay more money. It would, uh, increases would be based on the fact that our customers use more energy. And because of them using more energy, uh, we transfer part, a small part of that, uh, of that revenue to the city. So that is in, in basic terms what we're looking at. Now what, that, what this would do for us from a utility perspective and for the city as well, um, I'm sorry, let me step one back. Uh, the other thing we talked about is which, which year are we using to calculate the kilowatt hour usage. And in simple terms, uh, for, for example, fiscal year 2016, we would know the numbers and we would use the numbers from 2014. So by the beginning of 2015, the city and we would know exactly what the transfer would be in 2016. That gives us all very clear numbers. Uh, well in advance, no surprises to anybody. Uh, it would give the city the ability to say, I know exactly what I'm going to get and it would let us budget the way we need to budget for, for a couple of years. And we have proposed to use that system for the three years following 2015, just to give both sides a, a, a knowledge of what's going to happen. That will allow us from a utility perspective um, to plan. Uh, we have big needs. Uh, you know, we just talked about the water side and, and the electric side. We talked about Oakport. So we can actually, we have, we know what we're going to transfer. Uh, we know it's going to be more, but that's based on kilowatt hours. We would not have to re raise rates for that. We can actually use, uh, we know we have a couple of uh, rate raises coming up because of purchase power issues. Uh, we may have to have raised rates for uh, replacing infrastructure. Uh, but from a transfer perspective, uh, we would be set, which would actually help both sides understand what's going on. So in general terms, that's what we talked about. Well, uh, we should maybe talk about the floor. Uh, so yeah. uh, the city, of course, is concerned, as, as it should be, what happens if kilowatt hours go down. Again, as it happens, well, we don't know whether it's ever happened. So should we be. So should we be, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, again, as far as we know, as far as, as far as we can look back, it has not happened before, uh, but what happens if. And so we are talking about the concept of the floor, saying, hey, you know, we have a floor as a city that doesn't go below, uh, the transfer does not go below a certain number. That would have to come back to us here as well as an issue on, uh, on how we're going to deal with that. Um, we also discussed in our la last meeting uh, uh, a ceiling, and I think I surprised Heidi at that point uh, when Heidi brought up, well, maybe can, we want to put a ceiling, and we said, <coughs> listen, from our end, uh, the whole idea of putting this on a kilowatt hour base is to say, if we, for some reason, sell 50% more in electricity, we have no issue that the transfer goes up because it's based on usage. And if more, if we have higher usage, then it's, it's no issue on our end to say, yep, part of that, again, no raising of rates, it's just part of that, uh, part of the money that comes from the customers goes to the city. So we talked about that as well. Um, probably the biggest item that we have on the table here uh, for Friday is that the city uh, also proposed a, an automatic um, inflation adjustment. So basically saying after a certain, I think after 2017 to say uh, the transfer will go up or the kilowatt hour multiplier will go up by an inflation adjustment and that is going to be a big discussion because it would, us, would require us automatically to raise rates. And that's an issue that I brought up in the meeting that that would be a big issue uh, for discussion. But other than that, again, Devil is going to be in detail. From a structure perspective, if, if we all are in agreement with this kind of approach, I think we have uh, made very good progress in the, in the meetings, in, uh, especially in the last two meetings, uh, with, with our city liaisons uh, to, uh, or council liaisons to, to come to an agreement like this. Now, it's still dependent on council approval, obviously, uh, as it is on this end, but from our end, that's where we're looking. Sorry. Les, do I see a question from you? Yeah. Do you want to go first, Dave, or not? Being no, no Ralph's yeah. covered it well. Go ahead. Um, before, before Heidi uh, 
makes a comment on there, and I wish she would, as to uh, what the the two council representatives and the mayor think of this idea. Um, details is what Ralph mentioned, and in in my experience, the more simple an agreement we can make, the easier it is to explain to people, in, including uh, other governmental officials, our, our residents and everything else. This does not seem that simple to me. Uh, and here are a couple of reasons why. Number one, we don't know what it'll be. Number two, there are a bunch of exceptions that the city council has granted us, including Old Port and <coughs> economic development incentives and so forth. Um, and thirdly, uh, this may not be the easiest for our, our residents, and I'm not saying our residents are dumb, but I had a difficult time understanding this too. And the fourth thing is, um, if our transfer goes up and it doesn't cost us a rate increase, I'm just curious where the money comes from. That would be coming from increased usage. Right Only. Yep. Yes. So Only if we system. stay flat, the transfer would not change. Right. That's Correct. what you're recommending. Uh, anyhow, I, I much prefer something simple, such as 2015, it will be Y dollar amount. Uh, 2016, it'll be X dollar amount, which is probably different from 2015. So I'm, I'm not really a fan of this because it's complex. Uh, who, who gets to determine what all the numbers are. Well, we do. Whereas with a, a dollar amount per year, it's an agreement between the City Council and Morehead Public Service Commission. So I'm, I'm not a real fan of this. But, Are you but, getting that impression that I'm not a fan of this yet? Can't. I'm not a fan of this. Then I did a bad job explaining it. <laughs> no, 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 I'm still not a fan of it. Uh, it's, it's more complex than, uh, than I think a, a simple, here's the dollar amount for 2016, agreed upon between the two parties. That I can easily explain to anybody. Well, if, if I can, I, okay. I, and I respect, <clears throat> fully respect your, your thought process less. Uh, from my perspective, having sat here as long as I have and seeing the transfer escalate to a position that has impacted both our competitive edge against our neighbors to the west and also uh, caused us to be threatened with the loss of large customers, we do have to do something to manage and control the amount of the transfer. Fully respecting the city's needs for funds, I think that, in all honesty, the more Public Service Commission has responded to those needs in the past with yeoman service. I think we've come through and provided funding far before, beyond what we anticipated doing, and certainly beyond the, quote, agreement, end quote, that I keep hearing about. But at the same time, I think it is also imperative that we have as long-term an arrangement with the City Council as possible so that we can do future planning. And I think everybody can understand that we, we, we set a figure for at least a, a base year, whatever that is, and, and I don't know, you, you're all gonna have to fill me in on where we're going with that. But also understand that there is a formula or a factor that will provide for our incentive to sell more electricity as well as if that happens, we build more rooftops and more head and we have some factories come in or do whatever we're going to be doing, that that will provide additional funds to the city as well. And, and that's all good for all of us because the more growth and more head, the better off we are. And, and we all know, like I said earlier, we've got the best product to sell in the region for any product that we sell. I do get concerned, maybe because I've drafted a lot of legal documents over the past 40 years, but I do get concerned when we talk about putting a COLA on something that we cannot control, or a cost of living adjustment. They, they make me very nervous. I, for one, would not vote in favor of a COLA. Sorry, that's just, just how I am. But I respect this process, and I'm glad we're getting there. It's something that hasn't happened in many years, even though we requested it. And as I mentioned at our, 
our, our luncheon the other day, uh, I want to personally thank Heidi and Chuck for, and the mayor, because the mayor has also been involved in these discussions, for being willing to roll up their sleeves and go to work and talk to us about a subject that really needs to be talked about. We are not a taxing authority. We shouldn't be used as a taxing authority, but we do provide funds to the city of Moorhead, and that's part of our job as well. But it would be nice that we can control how that is <coughs> calculated going off into the future. If, if we start with a three to five year agreement, maybe we'll find out that it's working so well it'll become a 20 year agreement. You know, I mean, we, we do our planning for 20 to 30 years and more in the future, especially with electricity. So uh, that's my thought. And I, and I, I know where you're coming from, Les. Let me, let me throw a couple of other things out there. Uh, in the past, when uh, we've talked about the dollar amount of the transfer, okay, there's really three dollar amounts involved that I know of. One electricity, one water, and one economic development. And yet, and you think that really that's not so hard. You add the three of them together and that's the number you come up with. But in the past, uh, city council members and commission members haven't, haven't done it that way. And now we're making it even more complex when, when we're talking about a calculated amount for a year. I th David? <coughs> if I may, I think a little um, predetermined complexity is probably better than the unpredictability <laughs> that we've had every year for the last 40 years. And so I, I guess my response to a little, little complexity is, is I'm okay with that. If what we've done is we've come up with an agreement uh, that, that is factored uh, for a predictable future, and, and you know, we probably haven't gone far enough here to explain how that, how that factor has been arrived at. But That's but why is, I want this yeah, discussed. Because it is based on, um, on, on what is an agreed uh, 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 amount of, 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 of money that would be determined on the sales of electricity, as opposed to the open-ended, you know, we said, they said, she said, he said, kinds of discussions that we've had over the three years that I've been involved with. With, with this discussion. It's never really had anything to do with what it was that we were doing as a utility to sell, to sell the product and to provide the service. It just had to do with how much money we could squeeze out of which, which end of the budget in order to arrive at, at a number at the end of the year. And I think, I, I think that's probably where we've really run into so much trouble, especially uh, by the time we got down into December and the wrangling was going on and we couldn't arrive at a conclusion. In fact, we, we didn't arrive at a conclusion a couple of years ago and then we fought about it for the next two years. So <clears throat> I'm hopeful that over the next several meetings as we, as we go through a process to examine the kilowatt hour proposal as opposed to just the open-ended negotiation of how much can you get and how much can we afford and, and, and what, you know, whatever, whatever the open-endedness of that number is. This, this provides us something that is really going to be very predictable. It's just a math, it's just a math exercise at the end of the year. And for the next, well, this year plus three years, we're gonna have a math exercise and we're gonna know what that number is. It's gonna be very predictable. And a little bit of complexity is gonna lead us to that. But we haven't had anything to be complex. It's just been politics. It's just, it's, just been, it, it's just been a discussion of a number, and I'm hoping that we can get beyond that so that we have a, have a real process based on an agreement that we've made you know, between the two, the, the two bodies. Well, as much as possible, this is to be an apolitical body, uh, mm -hmm. and we, we, according to the Charter and according to state statutes, mm -hmm. are to set our rates based upon the cost of selling the widgets that we sell, which happens to be kilowatt hours and uh, volumes of water. And, uh, and we should do that. And at the same time, fully respect the charter and make sure that we do, the other part of our job was to funnel some money to the city council so they can meet the needs of this community, which is a great community. Les? Um, I, would like, I would like our representative from the city council uh, to give any comments that she feels like, uh, pro or con. Uh, because uh, I want, I want, we've heard from one side of the committee. Yep. And there is two sides to the committee. And, and we know that we trust these two, right? I trust Heidi. Okay. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Are you insinuating? No. 
I, I think I think that and I'm giving her some time over there. I trust the whole gang of five now that I think I about trust, it. I trust the mayor, I trust <clears throat> Chuck. A couple of people I don't trust in this world, but are you ready to <laughs> ready to say and something? We're not even asking you to name right. names, yeah. They're, They're not, not in the room. room. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, well, at this point in time, uh, I, I believe that the city that those of us from the from the city that are on the transfer group are in favor of, of this agreement, um, the kilowatt per hour. Like Ralph alluded to, um, there are you know, a couple things that we're, we're, we still need to work on. The, the inflation, or you know, otherwise known as the, the COLA, I think there's room for um, negotiating there. Um, my, my opinion would be that I, I guess I wouldn't support maybe that amount or the idea of applying a cola to a utility, I can't speak for the other two. That sh that's just my opinion. Um, so yeah, you know, we're, we are where we are, I guess, and we're, we're comfortable where we are with the, with the kilowatt per hour. The concerns in the past were um, having a floor or a safety net, making sure that the transfer never went lower than the previous year, and, and we worked out that. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and it does, it might seem complicated, but I think, um, Dave, you, you kind of nailed it, that it, it's, it's a math exercise, and it really isn't quite as, as complicated as the political arguing and the uh, political stuff <laughs> has been in the past. <laughs> so, I don't know, does that... If, if, if I can make a comment, uh, Heidi, you indicated that you wouldn't want the transfer to never be lower. My only concern in that regard, and that's why I have a problem with floors, but I will respect the decision of whatever we come up with here, is if we have a disastrous year, there obviously has to be some kind of an out because we are self-insured if, you know, if we have a situation that causes us to not, A, not sell as many kilowatt hours because of a disaster, or in the alternative, have to invest a lot of funds. But uh, i just throw that out there. John? Well, I think there's a provision there in Section 7 that states that there is a significant uh, decrease in sales, that that would be an exception to the mm -hmm. fact. But from a new person here on the commission, it, it appears to me that the old way was not working. It was getting more and more difficult and more contentious all along. So having a system based on increase of sales that dictates if you should have any increase or level seems to be a very valid way of resolving the issues that have been what I've heard over the last few meetings that I've been here because it sounds like over the years it was getting more and more difficult to come to a, uh, a mutual agreement. So based on a mathematical formula, less, I think that might be an option to consider at least for a few years to see how that works. And then and if it fails, then of course you can go back to the drawing board. But it seems to be a pretty straightforward and as you said, maybe I'm the more numbers person, but it, I would think it was a very good system that's been drawn up by the group. So I compliment you. Well, when they told me I had to take calculus, that's when I went to poli sci. Uh, you had a comment, Ross? I had a question, actually, uh, or maybe I have a comment. Uh, <coughs> this, we didn't invent this. Uh, we're seeing this from a number of other utilities, right? This, this whole approach, kilowatt hour. Correct, test. correct. And I would like to throw it up on the screen uh, and just kind of go through it allow people at home to see it, you know? I mean, some people do like numbers, and I don't think it's probably as complex as, uh, I mean, we'll just, we'll just see, because we tried to simplify. Could you, could you throw that table up there, Casey? Yeah, that one there. Um, and, you know, people at home aren't gonna be able to see the numbers or anything, uh, but take, I'll just walk through it a little bit, because this really is the formula. And this is, you know, we've had a number of scenarios based on the growth rate and that type of thing, but I'll just go over a few of the highlights and then you can kind of look at it and see how that worked. Um, 
just and, and let's make a point too that the numbers we're seeing there are have nothing to do yep. with our discussion. This is just for yep. show purposes, right? Yep. This is just an example. I this mean, is you'll an see show and tell. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I mean, some of the committees may see familiar numbers, and the the math is right on here, and the the growth rates are right, and all that kind of kind of thing. Um, but let's take a look at the green line first, and we'll just walk through that green line. Um, you'll see on the left-hand side, there's 2013, that says sales year. And then you look a little bit right in the middle, it says transfer year. We're actually, and in the agreement it states this, I mean that we would use actual numbers from uh, the year just completed to figure out the budget for the following year. Um, and correct me, Ralph, if I'm wrong, because Ralph uh, did a lot of work on, on kind of working through this. Um, so you see the 442 million kilowatt hours. That's an actual number for the sales of kilowatt hours in 2013. So that's, that's rock solid. Uh, the exemptions are also rock solid. It's kind of the same way we do with the uh, uh, Red River Valley Cooperative. We, they look at our, they don't have to look at our meter data. We provide them with meter data, uh, uh, which, well, anyway, I'm, those exemptions are for service territory primarily, and uh, that's for the south end of town where we've had kilowatt hour sales. So that's the exemptions, service territory and economic development. PACTIV is getting a, uh, an incentive for some incremental kilowatt hours that we sell to them. Those are included in that number. Um, I believe that number 29 million kilowatt hours. So we subtract 442, uh, 29 from 442 and we get 413 million kilowatt hours. So that's the net kilowatt hours. We multiply that by the, uh, it's 1.47 cents per kilowatt hour. You'll see that third from the right. That gets a resulting number of 5,980,900. Um, that's the, the number that would be in this example only, proposed for 2015. If the formula was 1.447 cents, that number would be, you know, the number that we would provide for a general fund transfer would be 5,980,900. Now, before we forget, and it's kind of getting dropped out of the conversation, and I'm gonna keep pulling it back in, uh, and Les uh, alluded to this, those two columns on the right um, there's a general fund transfer and there's a capital improvement fund transfer and the total ends up being around 8 million and I don't think we should forget to use a formula for that one as well. Now I'm, my budget committee is not even with me on this one because it does complicate it a little bit more but it's not, again it's not hard. You take the 413 million kilowatt hours times the, uh, it's actually 0.45 cents and then you get the 1.848 million. And that's the, that's the transfer that would happen to the, or that would go to, toward the city's capital improvement fund. Um, anyway, that's, that's kind of the formula. That's that green line, that's for one year, that would be like for next year. And then what we basically do is forecast it out just by multiplying that first column by 1.5% to get a forecast, and that's all it is, is a forecast. It's just based on our last 10 years of sales, uh, historic sales, we just multiply it out. As mentioned by uh, Ralph, if it was, you know, 50% more than that, you know, you'd multiply the actual kilowatt hours by, that, by those two multipliers to get the resulting transfers. Uh, with that, I mean, I'll take questions, but that's basically the formula. And maybe, maybe to Les's point, so I, I know Les, maybe it, it sounds pretty complex, but basically we know what the numbers are, the, or the usage are uh, in a year. Uh, we know what the exemptions are. They're pre-agreed with the council. Uh, we take that off, and by the beginning of next year, we know what the city will get for the then following year. Uh, so it may look a little bit complex, but actually from, a, from an applying it perspective, it is, it is extremely simple uh, to actually do. Well, the multiplier, we backed into the multiplier, the 5980900. No, how you came up with the actual multiplier. 
Well, that's a, you know, all it is is the division of yeah, this 5980 divided by the actual kilowatt hours. Okay. So it's not based on history or anything <clears throat> that you got from any other utility. Well, and, it's, and it's the formula we use to work in from the number. Okay. Well, in that, I mean, it's simply the 5980-900 divided by the leftmost column, or the, not the leftmost, the 413 million kilowatt hours. It's the negotiator. Yeah, so and it's... So that number is a result to get to the number that you want it to. Right. No. <laughs> and then we just kept it, and then we just kept it the same for those other years. So, I mean... Well, what, Heidi's what, agreeing with that one too. What would happen? What, what's going to happen, John? Is uh, the, the groups would get together and basically they would be negotiating a multiplier and probably a floor, and that's really where we're at right now in the discussions. And, and truly, that, that that was the hardest part of the conversation. Yeah, was really talking about these multipliers and 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 where it was that we could arrive at a place that that everybody was was going to be. So should should well, the multiplier know. have a cola? You know, yeah. that was discussed at the last meeting. What should the floor be, and should it be a fixed amount for the next four years, or should it escalate somehow, and then if so, how would it escalate? Now, and my question is going to be, okay, you've got this formula that you brilliant mathematicians have, have brought up to us, and, and Les and I are going to say, we, we, still have to, we still have to understand it before we vote in favor no, of it. No, 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 I understand yeah. the mathematics. I got a math degree. In a computer science it's okay. the I'm going back to that poly science. It's the lawyer that can. Okay, yeah. But, <laughs> but explaining it to some other folks out and there I, that want to know why their rates went up that, well, is going to be but that more always, difficult. I understand that, and I'm usually the one standing there doing that. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, but I want to know for sure, and everybody has to understand, whether it's a council or us, that when we come to this conclusion, we will also be within the parameters of the city charter. Because you often hear the comment, well, you know, we can go to the full 20% and all these kind of conversations, which is, you can set it anywhere you want. It, it also, there has to be, mine is on. There also has to be a recognition that we as a utility board are not dealing with the same margins of profit, if you will, that we were when that charter was established. That, I mean, we don't, we don't have as much money to play with as we used to have. And so from that standpoint, you know, as long as we stay within the charter, because that's vitally important to think all of us, both sides of this equation, do you, are you guys comfortable on that theory? I, I think we all agreed that, that, that that's, the, that's the check. You know, okay. I mean, each, each yeah. year as we examine this, especially with, with the floor discussion, you know, if, 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 if not, if hitting a floor actually put us in violation of charter, for example, and that's possible, uh, then, we've, then we've got to talk about that, you know, because we can't violate the charter. So if, if it has to go down, it's going to go down. Um, but at the same time, uh, it, it's, it's the increases that we were really trying to hold, as, a, as opposed to, to just you know, this, this wide open negotiation of 250,000 to 650,000 to whatever, to, you know, whatever the numbers were going to be from year to year. And in this way, uh, we, have a, we have a factor that we agree to for a period of about f you know, four years, in, including the, the, the upcoming one, that is going to give us the, the predictability for those years for us to have a clean budget process as opposed to such a, such a messy one. Well, and, and one thing I want to remind everybody when it comes to talking about, and, and, and this is fairly simple, when, when it comes to talking about cost of living adjustments, for example, Outside of government, nobody talks about cost of living adjustments because the average Joe Blow that's operating his business on the street does not have a guarantee next year. The people who are our customers don't have a guarantee relative to their income as business people or their income as persons within our community. They don't have a guarantee. And so from that standpoint, I think we, what we're saying also, or at least I'm saying to the this whole process is we would expect to operate like a business and perhaps that thought process should also go into the budgeting for the other units of government that we, we, we don't have guarantees. And if we hear anything on the street, it's going to be, why would you plug a cola into something when you don't know what you're going to have to sell? And so I would be very concerned about that, very concerned. Wes. Yeah, from a 
a uh, process perspective again. If this does pass tonight, that's half the approval. Uh, do we have any idea why this, when the city council might address it? I would imagine it would it would go to the council shortly after the transfer group would would come to a, a conclusion. I would assume that it would go then immediately to the next council meeting, voting meeting. Okay, I, I assume that the, the group was making this recommendation. You but have not finished your work yet? No, I mean, all we're doing today in this group is we have looked, we have given the background. We're not approving anything today. We're we need to go good. to our next meeting. Okay. In, a, yeah. in other words, the, yeah. uh, the document that has big draft on it that we voted to table here not too long ago should not be sent. That's a discussion no, draft. That's a discussion. That's just, just, just information only. The joint agreement? That's just yes. draft. Yep. Yeah, that's just draft. That, that, Okay, and it, and it should not be sent, it should not be signed by no. me and, and no. Ken and, no. and Delray and Mike. No. No. That's not at, at this no. stage. Not at, the, at the working group, you know, the uh, at, city at council. your next report, it may be. Yeah, there might be a draft that you'll see that the working group endorses. Okay, if the working group is not endorsed as draft, why is it even here? I think for informational purposes so okay. that we get caught up with what's been going on at the discussion group. I don't, I think it's good for all of us to be aware of what's happening uh, because we are rapidly getting to the end of, I mean, we, we talked about having these discussions a long, long time ago. No, I agree with and that. And now we're at, it's middle of October and we haven't, we don't have a firm idea where we're going with this. We as a board have to know where this is going. I think that's one reason it's here less. Uh, and I, I hope that we can have an agreement as soon as possible for all of us, yeah. and uh, I think it's in everyone's best interest. Rolf? Uh, just one quick, uh, quick comment on the uh, rate increase. I think Leslie brought that up. Um, if we go with this, if we go this route, uh, and we do a, an increase for 2015, and then we'll kilowatt hour based after that, uh, we may have to do an increase in 2015. Additional rate increase? For, yeah, the, for to transfer catch up, so because catch we're up. two years behind. Okay. To catch up, right? Because we are, we have been flat for two years, or one year actually. Uh, but going forward for three years, we would not, assuming that we will have, um, you know, the growth Stable that we always base. have had. But it's it's a two-year lag. You're using 2013 to calculate 2015. Yep. And but even in my simple math, that's two. Yes, but it would not require us to increase rates the way we would structure it. Because the multiplier will, it, it, it works out. And we can explain that more, but, for, but a, a pure rate increase for the purposes of accommodating well, transfer yeah, I understand would that. only be once. Okay. I think this is the equivalent of Ralph saying, trust me, mm -hmm. but I could be wrong on that. <laughs> uh, the, the other thing so. is, in, in listening to <laughs> some discussions at the city council level, and there, there was some talk that there was an agreed amount of $6,350,000 as a transfer. We don't have an agreement yet. No. No. That, that, that is the number that we, as, as a working group, have, have agreed on as, as the basis of this conversation. Okay. So I, I, I wouldn't say that, 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 that that's gone into the budget in any firm sense, okay. other than that that was the number that, that we've been able to come up with as a group you know, to, to work from. So, um, okay. I, I think it's important to, to, to also point out that in the working group, uh, as we talked about what year to base this on, we, we, we talked about, well, let's go back to August. You know, we'll, we'll, go a, we'll go a September through August thing, so we got a more recent number and so forth. But, but we really did arrive as a working group back at, let's look at the end of the last completed fiscal year as we, as we do this. So I, I, I think there's, there, there's, a good, there's a good basis for that, for that agreement. And, and it was uh, among the five of us that, that were working on this this panel to, to say, let's go with what is the year-end audited financial stated number as opposed to just grabbing a number that is the end of some arbitrary 12-month period. I, 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 am I right? wholeheartedly yeah. agree with that <laughs> perspective. Okay. Picking the 15th of August or the yeah. 18th of October, I think, would be really, really strange. I thought it was a brilliant idea. <laughs> so our German friend came up with that one, is that? Yeah. Yeah. Well. Ralph and I can disagree without being disagreeable. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, I, I think it's, it, it's worthwhile to point out, too, that uh, Ralph and I even started swinging at each other on one of these factor discussions because we did not agree. You know, it, it, the, the, the dynamics of these meetings uh, have, have been such that I think it's worth pointing out that um, it hasn't always been this team versus that team. Sometimes it's been, you know, a couple of them and a couple of other. This has been a conversation that has been worthwhile. And, and even while we're talking about what it is that we want to propose that we move forward with here and now, I think we're setting the stage for another conversation. You know, we're going to get into an agreement, but, but I, th I think as, as time goes along, then, then we really start to look at, at what it is the dependence is on, on, on this number. As, 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 because we're going to go through those three or four years. And then we're going to have to start to talk about it again. And, and so, so this is our opportunity to take that window of two or three years and, and, and work towards something that's going to carry us further on into the future. And I can only imagine also, and it's something we haven't talked about tonight, but if, if we do have a long-term agreement, and I think that's our hope, that that is going to be received in a glowing fashion with our bond rating agencies. Uh, as we move forward uh, for both of us. It's, I mean, everything is more predictable. Um, is there anything further that we have to discuss or should we just accept the report and hope that our gang of five uh, can move forward? And if you guys are going to come to fisticuffs, I guess we can have a motion, entertain a motion. He's bigger than I am. I'm maybe, worried maybe, about Maybe that. one comment. I mean, I, I predict we will have an agreement with, with which both parties are somewhat unhappy. <laughs> And then we know we have a good agreement. Any lawyer will tell you that if both sides leave satisfied. the place unhappy, that's probably a fair. Not fair entirely transfer. satisfied. Yeah. That's right. I move we accept the report. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Okay. The motion carried. Guys, I and I do apologize. I need to leave. I have to teach uh, tonight and torture some students. So. Uh, my apologies. I can only assume what kind of torture that would be. I appreciate you uh, beginning a little bit late on my behalf because of my schedule. So thank, thank you, you very much. That brings us down to item nine, uh, which is to approve the policy on the determination of a gross net revenues, which was tabled previously on April 22nd. Do we have a motion to take this off the table? Do we have a motion to take this off the table? I move we take it off the table. Is there a second to the motion to take it off the table? Is there a second to the motion? We have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Okay. Mr. Schwant? Well, I don't know if I want to talk about it now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, this, uh, this policy is a uh, policy that is just like it says, determination of gross and net revenues. Um, it's a policy that comes from charter language that says it's the commission's role to determine uh, the net revenues uh, of the utility. And so what we did, and we did this a number of, well, back in April, uh, we put together a uh, policy in order to, you know, calculate the net revenues. Gross revenues are easy to calculate. Uh, net revenues need a further determination. We worked with um, you know, uh, John Bolger, our staff, uh, we talked to our auditor and we, we have this, uh, this policy. Um, I think previously we haven't had this because, uh, we didn't have the full commission and now we don't have the full commission again. So, um, I'm not sure what you want to do with this. If it ends up back on the table, I think it should be at some point, uh, approved. <clears throat> You know, especially if we're going to determine uh, net revenues, and net revenues is always going to be a test. So somebody has to determine what the formula is going to be, and uh, and we can talk about that. But that's really the intent of this policy: is to give staff direction on how the calculation of net revenues is to be determined. And it will make a difference. You know, if we do the formula. You know, and uh, I mean, we will have to uh, determine whether or not we have net revenues in any year in order to comply with the charter and pay the uh, transfer. So that's why this is important. If you don't do the formula, you know, you may not have to approve this policy. 
if you do the formula, you really are going to have to provide us direction on how you want the net revenues calculated. Okay. Mr. Budget Committee member, my you, you were kind enough to bring this off the table, yeah, yeah, so I'm looking yeah. to you for some input. Well, and, and my reason for bringing it off the table was really just so that we could have at least that kind of an explanation for, for what it is. Uh, it, it's probably important that, that we that we have the full commission uh, to, to make a final de determination. But uh, but I wanted I wanted Bill to have this opportunity to at least give us that outline, that that explanation, and then uh, you know we, we may want to put it back on the table. Okay, Les, John, did you have something? Your microphone has. I guess, according to this, we are supposed to follow gap counting principles. So, wouldn't we follow gap principles to determine this, and we wouldn't have to come into a discussion? The uh, charter language says we have to determine uh, net revenues using gap principles, and um, the way we're interpreting this is that there's some ambiguity, if you will with uh, how we treat um, the accumulation of reserves. So if we are not accumulating reserves, um, then the net revenues is a simple calculation. If we're accumulating reserves and we budget for that, you know, how do we treat that accumulation of reserves? So if we are in a process of building reserves and we're gonna build reserves by a budgeted $200,000 this year, is that, in the calculation of net revenues, is that available to the city council or not? And in this policy, we say, if we're accumulating reserves and the commission is budgeted for that, then those accumulations would be unavailable to the council. So we may get to the, you know, if we have a low sales year, and the formula, you know, says that uh, we're not going to, we're going to provide this amount, but our net revenues are not such that, you know, we say we have a bad year, we have a, a storm and we have to do a bunch of uh, rebuilding of the system. And we had to expend a bunch of money for a storm and our net revenues are negative. We wouldn't provide, we would only provide up to what our net, net, net revenues are to the city and what's going to happen is they're going to say, well, according to GAP, that $200,000 that you budgeted for the accumulation of, of reserves, we should send to the council. And that's where we would say, no, we're not interpreting it that way. Here, we're setting the policy so that we interpret it ahead of time, not after the fact. And in most, just like most policies, under normal circumstances, this, none of this would even matter. It's just going to be like the example I just mentioned, and we want to. Has anybody indicated a problem with us accumulating some reserves? It, because we have a reserve policy that we right. we've adopted. Have we had any negative comments with regard to that policy, or that leads us to believe that it's a problem? So. Well, I don't believe. I mean, your question is: uh, Have we had any complaints about? Uh, our reserves. I didn't or say our, complaints, but I did negative comments. Yeah. Well, not that I can recall at this moment. Has a policy been reviewed by either AR auditors or BR legal counsel? And I see Mr. Bolger sitting over there. Uh, it's been reviewed by both. Okay. And yeah, John is here in case you need to. I mean, he. Yeah. I mean, I won't speak for John. I mean, he's been concerned no, about. No, he won't let you anyway. So. About the net revenue provisions in the. Uh, uh, agreement he's been concerned about those this helps with some of his concern okay Les, so, it appears to me that that perhaps this this policy change is still early i i really believe that our budget committees have to come to an agreement make a recommendation to us before we can act on this particular policy i think i moved to table it back in april and I'm perfectly willing to move the table it again. Okay. So we got a motion to put it back on the table. 
question or clarification? I didn't make the motion. I want to continue okay. the discussion okay. if there is. It is a motion. We, it isn't a motion yet? Okay. No. We, I'm willing to make it. You okay. said we have I'm audited financial it. statements? We have audited, yeah. So yep. it would seem to me that we should get a recommendation from our auditors as far as what they perceive as a gap policy regarding our reserves. And he, that would they, eliminate our, our people who aren't accountants to make that decision. They would say, talk to your attorney about the interpretation of the charter. No, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking then what is gap policy as far as what reserves are. I think what- Oh, reserves, okay. Yep. Yes, and that yep. would clarify if it is part of the city or not. And that would be based on gap, which was given to us by our auditor which there would not be any argument then between commission and city council of what or how they should be determined. Well, I need a little further clarification and maybe I need Nancy to step up to the uh, microphone. Well, while Nancy's doing that, um, for those people at home who may be listening into this extended discussion, GAP is uh, generally accepted accounting principles and it's an industry-wide standard. Nancy? Nancy Lund, Admin and Finance Manager. Um, what this policy or would do for us would um, allow us to follow our financial strength policy, which talks about reserves. When we have talked with Ide Bailey, our auditors on that, um, they're more than willing to educate us on GAP and things like that, but what they're not willing to do is interpret the charter. So we have had conversations with them before, and so when you get into that area of reserves, we have had those conversations, and they do shy away from helping us in that situation. So and you're telling us we're an accounting never never land. Yeah, they're not going to try to interpret the charter as far okay. as the gross revenue and net revenue calculations. So let me ask you this, is this a subject that would be a, a a prime subject for discussion with the gang of five, number one, and, and B, for our strategic planning meeting that we've got coming up shortly, and Same C, after the next meeting of the gang of five? It could be. I don't see us getting anywhere tonight with this. We're not going to. No. Based on your reaction to that question, I move the table. <laughs> Is there a second to table? Second. We got a motion and a second to table again. We put it back on the table after we took it off the table. It was back on the table. Is there all those in favor signify by saying aye? Aye. aye. Those opposed, the same sign. So it's back on our table. We've never talked about tables so much as this, Les. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. No, no, you're not. <laughs> no, I'm really not. No, you're not. I know it. Uh, I see that we have a nexus to approve the updated water main assessment management plan. And I know that this is a subject that's near and dear to, to Rolf's heart. And as a matter of fact, he was going to do a show and tell the last time I saw him with some, uh, some pieces from uh, some underground that show is, a serious amount of deterioration. This item is not time sensitive, so we could okay. discuss this at another meeting. Can we defer that then? Could I have a motion we to put this could. back on the table, or put it on the table rather, until Rolf can be here with us? I move that we table the water main plan. Okay. Uh, that brings us down to the closed session. Are you not going to give a second? And hey, can I have that? a second for that one? <laughs> it's been a long not evening. I'm second it by your previous Is there comments. a second to that one? Comments. Therefore, John has to second it. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same sign. Thank you, Les. <laughs> uh, that brings us down to the closed meeting. Uh, and a couple of items. Uh, the meeting will all be closed for an executive session as permitted by the Minnesota statute section 13D05 subdivision 3C to consider offers for the purchase or acquisition of property along 32nd Avenue South in West Fargo for the relocation of a 115 kV transmission line and also as permitted by the Minnesota statutes section 13D05 subdivision 3A to evaluate the performance of the general manager. Excuse me. I, I would think that we would not have uh, any action taken uh, as a result of this discussion, correct? I think that is correct. Okay, and so from that standpoint, we can adjourn the meeting and go into closed session. Yes. For the record, Mr. Chairman, I uh, need to uh, 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 
bow out of that uh, that conversation because of a previously stated okay. possible conflict of well, interest? Well, if, if you have a conflict of interest relative to one of those items, which I believe is a KV line, yes. I think we would still have a quorum for purposes of our discussion. If you want to be absent, we will tell you when we've finished our discussion. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. All those I move we're going that to close we session. Go move the closed session and adjourn from there. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We're now in closed section. Thank you.